Hello everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today we are going to be making part one of a four part video series centered around Mokume. This is for a job that's coming up for a up, an up and coming wedding date for a customer of mine and I thought that it would be interesting and that you guys would find it valuable. So I hope you enjoy this video uh, this whole, and the whole series. It's a four part series and I uh, hope you guys like it. Thanks for watching. All right, everyone. Here we are at the workbench. Um, to make mokume, one of the most critical things, as well with de making Damascus or anything of the like, is to take and keep your material that you're working on impeccably clean. More so with mokume versus Damascus. Uh, both are important, but mokume extremely important as even the slightest bit of dust will show up in the final product of your piece. So, one of the first items you're going to need is a mason jar or a glass jar of some kind. You'll need the material to be cleaned. Yes, these are U.S. quarters. Um, this is what I'm actually going to be making the Mokume out of. It's essentially a quarter is made out of copper and nickel, and so that's what we're going to work on. Make sure all this is in shot. Yep, there it is. Um, oh, uh, reason for this being, usually I would try to take and make this out of actual, nicker, actual ugh, nickel and copper pieces themselves. Um, but for this particular job, they wanted this to have a lot of significance. So what, so what they're doing is they're actually sending me coins that all the participants in the wedding, the people that are attending the wedding, are have a special significance to them. And so they send me these coins, and I'm going to be taking all these coins and putting them together and forge welding them up into a, a mokume piece with some different twists and patterns in it, and then putting them into this Damascus cross that I'm going to be making. Uh, so this way it's more symbolic. So today, I won't actually be working on the customer coins that are coming through, but I'm going to show you the process if you undertake this with some quarters. Um, as far as I know and as uh, what I've tried, dimes and nickels don't work very well, and you never use pennies for this process. Pennies are mainly zinc, and they burn up, they make a mess, and they kill your lungs, so don't use pennies. But pretty much... Uh, Dimes and nickels, I've never had much success with, but I've always had success with quarters. So once you've got your material, your glass jar, you're also going to be wanting to take and get some acetone. Um, hopefully you can see this. Yeah, there you go. Um, just standard painter's acetone. You can take and buy this at Walmart. Um, in fact, that's where I got it from. Um, problem with Walmart, you can only get one gallon at a time. I don't know, something about, I don't know, I guess people huff these this stuff nowadays and make bombs and all sorts of other stupid crap out of it, but um, uh, it's really annoying. You could go to Home Depot and pick as many cans up as you like, uh, but Walmart, you're only going to get one can, which is fine if you're only doing small quantities of things. I use it for cleaning and stripping my copper bowls. Um, you can also use denatured alcohol and use it as well. But essentially, we're just going to take and fill this up. And we're going to submerge our coins in it and let them sit for a period of a couple hours. Um, you want to do this at the beginning of the day before you get started on stuff. Just throw them in. Let them soak. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to remove or strip the oils or any sort of oils or anything that would or contaminants that would be on the surface of these coins. Um, that's going to be really important going forward and every time we make a cut, a restack or something different where we have to weld in more material you want to clean your pieces thoroughly each and every time. So that's essentially the basic setup of what we'll be doing. I'll bring over my thing here if you wait one second. After all of your pieces are clean, this is a portable vise I have. 
and I actually locked this in my vise. But after you get all your pieces clean and handling them with gloves and with care, you will lock them in the vise like so. Lock them in your vise, get them all stacked up nice in a row, and, and just get them clamped together. There's a lot of different ways that you could go about squishing these coins together. I have found the easiest way is to use the vice jaws themselves. So I'll go over that in the next video in the video series where we actually make the initial weld um, in the vice and show you how I do that. And then we'll proceed from there. Um, it's very important that you clean your coins. If you don't, you're going to have problems with your coins not sticking. Um, that's one of the biggest problems with it. Um, number two, and I'll go over this in further detail in the second part of this series. This is not hard metal. So you are not trying to whale the hell out of this thing to try and, and get sparks and molten metal to fly everywhere. Because what you're doing is you're actually losing nickel and copper. You're just squirting it all over the place and you're not getting a bond. So I'll go over that more in my purposes for welding them in the vise to start with and show you how that's done in the second video. So anyways, that's enough for this video. Be looking for the second part of this series. It'll be in a link in the description below once it's released. And I will put all these videos in this four-part series in a playlist. Uh, that way they can be easily referenced for you guys. Um, so anyways, guys, gals, thank you for watching. Um, remember to hit that like button if you liked it. Thumbs down if you didn't. Or subscribe if you like to see more of this content. Thank you all for taking your time out to watch this. God bless you all. And we'll talk to you on the next one.